Hi, my name is Missy Littell and I'm the Customer Experience Manager at the Cuyahoga Falls Library. And today I wanted to share a little about how we're using this time to create some excitement around our makerspace and what we're doing with our technology classes. So the first thing we did was to create a virtual makerspace orientation. We had a makerspace orientation that we offered once a quarter and it was well attended. People would come and we would give them a tour of the space and they would see the equipment and how it worked and learn what they could make with it. And we knew we wanted a virtual version of this already. Um, there were some logistical issues. There were certain classrooms that wanted to come and visit and do a tour of the space and they just could not work out the logistics of busing all of their students there or even the time it took away from their their school schedule. We also had people reaching out to us from out of state who were working on their MLIS or something like that and they were wanting something that was on the website that they could see how our, our library's maker space worked and we just didn't have anything like that available. So this was a great chance to build that resource and so we started that virtual maker space orientation and what that looked like is we took pictures of the room and how it's normally set up and we shared those images during a Zoom class and then we also took videos ahead of time that were like one to two minute videos of the different pieces of equipment and how they worked. So the Ellison die cut machine, the laminator, the button maker, and then we shared those videos in the Zoom class so people could see how those pieces of equipment worked and what you could make with those items. It's not quite as effective as a hands-on class, but it's the next best thing, and it's something that we'll be able to use in the future for those classrooms that couldn't make it. We'll be able to share that class virtually instead, and we'll be able to make great use of this virtual class in the future. And then our summer classes, like many of you, we have this great program lineup that we were super excited about. And when COVID happened and we had to close our building, I wanted to find a way to still offer those classes rather than flush the whole series and start over again. We already had the materials ready. We already had the classes lined up in our advanced calendar. I wanted to find a way to still work with what we had and be able to still offer those classes. So we went virtual with a lot of those classes, starting with our 3D print class. Every month we offer a 3D print how-to class, how to design a print, and we were able to make stencils during that time. We made mask extenders very recently, and then next month we will be creating different bracelets designed together. So we offered that tutorial via Zoom. And then people can sign into Tinkercad during the class or afterwards and build their print. And we will print that for them at the library. It takes about a week or two to make all of those. And then they can pick it up at curbside. So that was one of the first classes that we were able to make go digital. Some classes, though, required materials to go along with the tutorial. So we wanted to find a way to make that happen. How did we get those supplies to people? And we created kind of this kit concept that we've been working with ever since. So this was one of the classes I was really excited about. We just did it this past Saturday. We were making this loom hanger basket together from loom knitting. And we worked with an organization that loaned us the looms and we needed a way to get those back. So we created these kits. Our tech services manager processed those and cataloged those very quickly for us. Um, but the looms, the hooks, and the needles all needed to come back, and then the yarn, they make the project, and then they keep that. So I recorded a tutorial of that. I emailed it out to everybody, asked them to pick up their kits, and then they'll be returning those to us so we can get the looms back. But we've been making great use of this kit concept ever since. Another example of that is our Family Maker Morning class which I was really excited about. It's kind of a makerspace story time concept that was a collaborative program between the children's department and the staff who often work in the makerspace. So our children's services manager, Beth, would read a STEM or STEAM concept story, and she recorded that, and then we combined that with the video of Carol Ann Ketch, our tech assistant, showing a tutorial of how to make a a STEM project together. So here's a kit full of different wires so that they can make a project together for this coming Thursday. And then here's another one that was an LED uh, light up paper project. So we have the battery, copper wire, paper, foil, LED light, and then all of that is in a kit that they just pick up and go. They don't return any of this to us. So they would pick these up, 
watch the story, watch the tutorial, and then make the project together. And that's another way that we were able to make use of these kits and get these materials into people's hands for a variety of classes. One last example is a, a watercolor greeting card that we'll be doing together in the next month or so. Um, so normally we would have all of these materials laid out in the maker space and ready to go. And we were trying to figure out how do we get all of that mobile in one person kits. So we have the two cards and then we created these 3D printed containers. And it turns out watercolors are very easy to make. It's just baking soda, sugar, and food coloring. So we're going to take and prepare those paints and give everybody one little one-person serving. And we've got that all kitted up and ready to go. So like I said, we've been making a lot of use of that kit and virtual class concept this summer. We've been having a lot of fun with that. It's a great way to keep excitement going about the makerspace, engage our patrons, and teach them new skills this summer. So thank you for joining me. We'll be talking a little bit more about this concept in NEO's September Tech Symposium. So I hope to see you then. Until then, take care and be safe.